When it comes to reviews, there are four things that matter. Yeah, it's more important than just collecting the reviews. If you want to actually make money from the reviews, there's four things that you need to know. Listen to this episode and find out. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg, speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, here to help you and your wedding and event business sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. I'm Alan Berg. Thanks for tuning in to the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about reviews. We know that reviews are a huge part of your business, and we know that couples are reading reviews before they reach out to you. A Wedding Wire survey of their couples said that it was about 90% or more of couples are reading reviews before they decide who they're going to reach out to for their weddings and events. So there are four things that matter most when it comes to reviews. The first thing is the number of reviews. Obviously, people are judging you based upon the number, but how many is enough? I have some friends that have over a thousand reviews, over 2,000 reviews just on The Knot or just on Wedding Wire. That's great if you're a big enough business like that, but for a lot of you, you'll never have that many. You'll never do that many weddings in your lifetime, so how could you possibly have that many reviews? So the key is, uh, according to a Wedding Wire, getting into double digits is, is your first goal. So as soon as you get onto a site, you want to get yourself into double digits as quickly as you can. And you think about it, you're searching for a restaurant, a hotel, someplace, and you see they have three reviews. You're like, hmm, three reviews. You see somebody else has 12 reviews. You're like, hmm, I like them better. That double digits really, they, they say, makes a big difference. Now, it does make a difference after that to have more, but you think about it, is 22 that much better than 17? Hmm, but 12 looked a whole lot better than three, <laughs> right? Even if the difference is almost the same, the increment becomes less. Friends of mine, again, that have a thousand reviews, a thousand and one versus a thousand isn't really making a difference. So that's not the important part. So the first part is the number of reviews. The second thing would be the score, right? The score. If there's a rating system, stars, numbers, whatever, obviously makes a difference. You want to have as high of a score as possible. Although interestingly, just having that one less than five star review can legitimize every other one that you have there. So uh, it does matter, the score, but if it's not a perfect 5.0, it's okay. People will still give you a chance. And when they're looking at the stars, a 4.9 looks like it's filling out the five stars anyway over there. So don't freak out if you don't have 5.0. Sometimes people are a little skeptical if they see it's only fives. Everything's a five. Like, really? I saw a review the other day. It, it, it was a four-star review absolutely raving about this business and they gave him four some people just don't give you a five it's okay it's okay as long as the average score is a high score there. the third thing that matters and this is really important is the recency so when i said i have a friend who's got a thousand reviews and is a thousand and one better it is if it's a recent one because it's not what have you done it's what have you done lately and that's what people care about. Uh, I was consulting with somebody today and on his website, he said, you know, he's been, been in business since 1994 and I told him to take that off. I said, in 1997, in, 19, in 1999, in 2004, that might've been okay. But at a certain point, you start sounding old. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how old you are, it matters the work that you're gonna do. The best DJs that I know, the best photographers that I know, the best florists that I know are not 27. They're more likely 47. And that 20 years difference is what made them so much better is their experience over that time. So take that number off for sure. But the recency of the reviews matters. First of all, because some of the sites will give you their awards, right? Their best of type awards, a couple's choice and things based upon recent reviews. So that's important. But the other thing is a couple coming in and trying to see, should I consider you for my wedding? If they see reviews that are old, they might go past you. I had, uh, when my uh, best friend's son was getting engaged, uh, got engaged, I should say, not getting engaged, got engaged. And they sent me a link to look at a venue to see if I knew anything about the venue. And the most recent review was two years old. 
So I took it upon myself to go to another site. It was on, what was it, on The Knot. It was 2017. This was 2019. The couple just got married last fall. And then on Wedding Wire, they had recent reviews. So they clearly weren't paying attention to The Knot. They were only paying attention to Wedding Wire. But what if your couple is paying attention to The Knot? And they look at it and they say, oh, two years old. Let's go find somebody who's got a recent review. So you could be losing business. So you want to make sure that you get re recent reviews on the sites that it matters. So here's a good thing for you to do. Go online and choose an incognito window or a private viewing window in your browser. If you just go to File, New, it'll give you a choice for either private viewing or incognito. And what that does is it hides all the cookies and things so your site doesn't know your history and it will hopefully show you something closer to what someone who's never been looking for your site will see versus you because when you search your browser has this history and thinks well you must be looking for what you saw before and it might not show you the same thing and you want to see where are all the places you have reviews because those are places people are posting them and that's where you want to ask for reviews so what i'd like you to do is start doing this going forward as you're onboarding people that you sign up as you're signing contracts add a question of where have you been reading reviews for planning your wedding and that's where you want to go back and ask them to post so if they've been reading on wedding wire they're more likely to post there if they've been reading on google or facebook or the nod or yelp or whatever that's where they're more likely to post especially something like yelp because yelp will likely if they've never posted on yelp and you say to somebody hey go go post a great review for me on yelp and they go and post a great review on yelp and then it doesn't show because Yelp is like, well, you probably paid them to do that. And they hide it. They hide it. I had this with me. I was looking on Google and it told me how many reviews I had on, not Google's, on uh, Amazon. Told me how many reviews one of my books had, but I couldn't see them all. The, the, the score is counting it, but they're hiding them. So you want to ask them to post where they're likely to go up there. I'm a Yelp elite. I have over a hundred reviews posted on Yelp. They'll put anything up that I post one two three four five stars doesn't matter because they know me i'm a known co commodity but the first time somebody goes to post they're a little skeptical about who you are because you haven't proven who you are to them so try to find out where they're posting and try to get them to post there this way you get the recent reviews there and then the fourth thing many of the sites these days allow you to respond to reviews and responding to reviews is important because it allows you to personalize that particular platform Think about it. If, if somebody's posting reviews on Google, you're not there, right? Like you're not even in the room. So how do you personalize that experience? It's by responding to what people wrote. And I like you to personalize that by reading what they wrote and then responding to it. I'm talking good reviews here, not bad reviews, good reviews. Respond to the good reviews. So let's say it's a wedding and let's say it's Jenny and Chris, okay? And Jenny posts the review, but she doesn't mention Chris. So what you could say is, Jenny, thanks so much to you and Chris for inviting me to be a part of your amazing wedding and then read what she wrote and then respond to those little details or add details that she didn't say. And now people are like, oh, I guess you really know who that is. And every one of those is a personal reply. It's only two or three sentences. You want to do that as quickly as you can because you're really not responding to Jenny you're responding so that the people that might be considering you will read that review and get your personality and go, wow, she sounds really nice, or he sounds really nice, or they sound really nice. So you want them to think more highly of you because you have a monopoly on being you and your personality. You don't have a monopoly on doing a good job for a wedding. So responding to the reviews. Now, some of you are thinking about, oh gosh, I have hundreds of reviews. Okay, I get it. I'm glad you do. Respond to the first few on each of the pages where you can do that. So if you go to the knot, you can't see every review. You can see a few of them, and then you have to click to read more. Just do the first few, and then as new one comes in, new ones come in, you want to respond there. And the same on the other sites. And, and speaking of which, on the knot, on Wedding Wire, and on Yelp, I don't know if you can do this on Google. I don't think you can do it on Facebook. You can tell it to keep one review at the top. You can choose which one to keep at the top. And that's called either featuring or pinning or highlighting. And when you do that, you get to choose some great review to stay at the top. 
I like it to be a shorter review. I know that sounds funny because some of you have some really great long ones. But if you put a long one at the top, it pushes all your other reviews further down the page. And when you've responded, it makes it even longer. So look for the great headline and the great first sentence. Right? If the first sentence is, we, we very much enjoyed working with Joan on, on our wedding, it's not very exciting. But if it's like, OMG, Joan blew us away with her floral designs, that's a better first line. And people don't read, they scan. So that first line is important there that they will see that and scan that. So number of reviews, score of reviews, recency of reviews, responding to reviews, those are the four things that matter most when it comes to reviews. Um, and again, I'll talk on another episode about replying to bad reviews. I hope you don't get any, <laughs> but I will talk about that. But for now, those are the four things I want you to think about. Asking for more reviews. Uh, quick answer on that one. According to Wedding Wire, which has millions of reviews, one out of five people post a response if you ask them once. Or I should say a review if you ask them once. One out of three if you ask them more than once. And then some of my clients are sending gifts and asking for a review with the gift and they're getting a better response. And I'll give you more detail on another episode as well. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Full transcripts of this and every episode are available on my website at allenberg.com. And if you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of the episodes, or you'd like to make a suggestion for a future topic or a guest for one of my dialogue episodes, you can email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, post a review if your platform allows it, and if you don't get email updates of the latest episodes, as well as upcoming workshops and masterclasses that I have, you can join at connectwithallenberg.com. I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. Thanks.